So, good evening, ladies and gents, and welcome to the WOT Pro League Season 2. We have gone all the way through the season, but we are up to the relegations now. So, before we can get to the finals that will be at Gamescom, which we're all excited for here, we do have to find out who's actually going to be present in Season 3. So, that top six is locked in. We will go through that. But for now, let's have a look at the games we're going to have today very briefly. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, we'll be seeing Dragonborns up against OM Injection. Now, if you guys have been watching since Season 1, you might remember these guys briefly they went through that before they've tried this route and it failed last time they faced off against evil panda squad and they couldn't quite cut it so they're coming back again and they'll be facing off against dragonborns a team have been doing fairly okay and then kind of slacked off a bit towards the end so they're fighting for their place as well into season three now let's look at the other game coming up as well we don't only have one we have two it'll be alpha up against spale so all of you community uh favorite fans out there you've got a bit of a treat coming up don't get me wrong so hopefully we're gonna have a good game today i know i'm excited about this how are you feeling about this one i'm feeling really good i'm i'm really looking forward to see how our own injection have progressed um they are a german team so mm. we have got two predominantly german teams playing against each other <laughs> um it would just be interesting because uh, evil panda squad they kind of have a, a really good tactic against uh Ohm injection i think that's probably what the reason why um Ohm injection got kicked out last time it kind of counters their style but mm. against dragonborns i mean it's this could be a really close um, but it, again, I'm kind of a little bit disappointed that Dragonborns isn't at Gamescom. I mean, Very a fourth true. place finisher um, sitting in 10th place in Season 2. I mean, that's how far they've dropped. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. But Alpha versus Spell, it, it, I, I'm on the fence about it. I think it could be a bit iffy here and there. Yep. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. And it'd be such a sad thing to see Spell go out. It would. It's it would such be, a personality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But... Someone has to drop and someone has to go up, and or stay, should I say. So let's have a look at the season so far. So you can see that top six, as we mentioned. And uh, let's have a look exactly who you'll be seeing at the finals in Gamescom as well. So if you are making your way across, you'll be seeing the likes of Virtus Pro, who are in that first place spot. Dignitas as well in rank two. They've had a nice back and forth this season, to be fair. A couple of games going one way, a couple going the other. I think we can all remember the previous mm -hmm. finals of those two, so that'll be a great game to watch when that one comes around. But Malsport's doing extremely well as well. Sitting in third, Denova following up in fourth, Kaznikru in fifth, and Evil Panda Squad sitting in sixth. And with Evil Panda Squad in mind, last time they faced against Dragonborns, they actually, I do believe Dragonborns actually lost to them. So on paper, the, the first game we're going to see today is going to be extremely close because both teams have lost in theory yep. to the Evil Panda Squad. So it's going to be very hard to call this one. And obviously Evil Panda Squad only scraped through to the finals in that sixth place. And you can see how close it was with Team WD as well. Both sitting around the same points, but obviously with the system the way it is, it has to you know, be filtered out that way. So very close stuff throughout. But... Obviously, that's not all we have coming up. There's a lot more kind of going on today and a lot more of the histories going on between these two teams. And we'll go into that in a little bit. We'll go into more depth in just a moment. But there's a certain someone who can kind of give you a little bit of insight how you can get involved into the show today because I can't stress enough how close these games are going to be. On paper, the first game, they both lost to the team you know, that they previously faced in relegations yeah. and the team that was facing um, Dragonborns towards the end of the season who they lost to 3-1. to one. So the same scoreline in both games, which resulted in a loss. So on paper, it's going to be extremely close. The second game, you've got one of your community favorites possibly leaving the season. Uh, that's heartbreaking stuff for me. And Alpha's a very strong team as well. Yeah, they're a very strong team. And I think they're even stronger than last season. Uh, they had uh, one or two uh, player lineups we'll talk about uh, when we actually get around to see that game. But I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how they're going to do. Um, and and Spell, it, it's, I mean, they're undoubtedly a stronger team. I think we can say that. Um, I mean, they went to the first season finals. But then they have those days. Like, if <laughs> Spell has one of those days where they just throw absolutely everything, then we could see them leave. I mean, it would be a shame. But then if Alpha managed to do it, then they, they're kind of worthy of it. You know, they, exactly. they, they, they push they it out. Exactly, they their way there. Exactly. I mean, you, you can't say, oh, Alpha's the worst team if they actually beat Spale. Exactly. That's, it's as simple as that. And that's what I love seeing in these is whoever can step up on the day. And that's surely going to be nerve-wracking for Spale, the team who can be phenomenal but also can fail at that last hurdle and just trip themselves up <laughs> and fall over. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's our thoughts towards the games coming up. I know a certain someone who can take you through the steps of how you can get your thoughts across to us in the studio and actually get you some goodies as well while you're doing it. And that sounds pretty good to me. So, guys, let's pass over to the lovely lady herself. May I welcome the one, the only... Melly, how are we doing today, my dear? Are you feeling as excited as we are for this? Good evening. I do. I indeed do. And um, I think this is going to be a great, great night. And I hope you all, I, uh, all, I, uh, you're all are ready for this uh, because we are 
and um, yeah, you can get involved by asking questions, for example. Just follow us on Twitter at WhatProLeague and uh, use the hashtag WhatProLeague to ask questions, which will be answered by our experts. And we will be also rewarding three tweets of the day. So the next thing is you can um, predict the outcome of the match and win one of two bonus codes by simply command, uh, commentating um, your prediction under the stream announcement, which will be online in a few minutes, and uh, on our Facebook page, sorry, facebook.com slash whatproleague. And um, beside that usual stuff, we have still our cheerful con uh, uh, contest. And we already have some great submissions. Oh, wow. Thank you for that in first place. But you still have the chance to participate till the end of the show. We will um, we will reward the three winners of uh, of the cheerful contest at the end of the show by um, yeah by giving out gold and bonus keys. Everyone likes loads gold. Of, loads of gold in in total 9.5k. So it's really worth the try. And much fun. That's all. So, guys, you heard it there. You know exactly how to get involved into that. And, well, if I wasn't sitting here casting this, I'd certainly give it a go. I would as well. I'm, I feel like a pixie. I love so much gold. Um, so, yeah, if you want to send me any of the gold, please do. I have received a couple of donations, which I'm really happy about. So can't continue doing that as well. Um, I'm talking to you, Berber, as well. I'm expecting lots of gold from you. Um, <laughs> yeah, but we, we can talk a little bit more about these teams. Um, Ohm Injection uh, and also Dragonborns. I mean, mm. Dragonborns, they are going to change their roster a little bit into Season t uh, season 3 if they qualify okay. for it. Um, uh, and Ohm, In Ohm Injection is obviously a new team, so we can talk we can talk about that as well. So we mm. can actually go up to the lineups now, um, check them out and see how these two teams are going to compare against each other. Um, Ohm Injection, I mean, they are a new team, as in they're trying to get into the Pro League. They failed in, in the first season, um, yeah. but they're not new players in any shape or form. If you've been following you know, the Clan War scene, even the general tournament scene, the Wargaming tournament scene, uh, then they're pretty well known. We've got uh, Bayer, who was actually one of my teammates, a brilliant AMX 1390 back in the days of Pirates, Oda Mois. Um, so... Really good player, loved him. He's he's one of the better ones. Uh, coming back into the game after a short break, I do believe. Uh, BN89, he was also uh, a, a long-time player, the team captain, I do believe, of OM Injection. A uh, good tactical uh, good tactical brain in him, so um, looking forward to see what he can pull out. Uh, apart from that, I would say, apart from Burton, maybe, who used to play heavy tanks, um, I'm not sure about all of them. I mean, Desert Arms as well. I recognize the name, but I'm not exactly sure uh, what they will be playing. Um, but yeah, I was talking about that... Um, that new player for, for season three, possibly for Dragonborns. Um, he's called yep. uh, Nicola, or AKA Nick Lashius. He was also one of my previous teammates. Brilliant okay. guy. Um, played, for, played with him at Go For All Stars in Cologne. I think that was in 2011. Um, yeah, so really good player, really good guy. Another AMX 90 player. Looking forward to seeing how he plays here. Yeah, definitely a lot to be proven here between these two. And the one thing that jumps out to me is the previous results. Now, I watched the VOD back of how, you know, Ohm Injection tried to go about qualifying into the next season. Mm -hmm. Now, they did play off fairly well. They had some interesting maps there. So, Himmelsdorf being one of them. And the one thing that really jumped out to me was their play on airfield. The one map they won, they relied heavily on their RT. Now, with the patch updates, we're not going to see that anymore. They got four kills with that RT, mm -hmm. bear in mind. So, it was a massive instrumental piece here. How do you think they're going to be compensating for that now with that composition in mind? You know these guys fairly well. Do you think they're going to be able to control that, do you think? Or is it going to be a massive blow to them? Well, I think if they've done enough training, um, they could possibly have, have gotten rid of that problem a little bit. Um, yeah, I think they were definitely one of the teams that relied on artillery. Um, they had a couple of good artillery players in the team. I mean, so many of the old players of, of World of Tanks in general are all artillery players just because, um, well, in closed beta, artillery was, was godlike, really. And, and anyone who, who was anyone who, who was a team captain or any good player was always playing artillery. Uh, we've got Inky, Fabs, I mean, uh, Everett Lucas, everyone who's who's really old members of, of World of Tanks. So, yeah, artillery, that could come into the equation. But I'm hoping that they've they've managed to kind of patch that problem up a little bit um, and just mm. going to bring some really good uh, tank action. So quickly take me through who's you're gonna be, who is going to be your standout player from these two. I know Dragonborn's well enough, but obviously OM Injection, to me, fairly new faces. Who should I be looking at from these two lineups who kind of shine in this sort of atmosphere? Yeah, I'm, I think Bayer. I think that he's going to be the guy who's... who's uh, making all the plays for him injection. I mean, obviously, um, he's just one of the guys I know, but generally, uh, really good player, really solid player. Um, 
very very aware of all the situations. He, he was very good at getting out of situations just because of the way he, he positioned himself on the map and, and in and in firefights. So looking forward to how he plays. In terms of Dragonborns, though, um, I'm hoping their new player, Niklasius, Nikola, um, who will be playing the tournament count today, um, is, is going to perform because uh, that's what you want to be doing when you're a new player in the team. You want to be stepping it up um, and just proving to your team uh, that you can be a really good player, but also making the team, you know, better so you can perform better in the next season. Yeah, exactly that. It's, and as you said, the pressure is on them because they want to be, you know, winning this game to get back into the next season. Mm -hmm. If you add a new player in and then you kind of do badly against a team that should, in theory, be fairly even, the blame's going to be on him almost. And it may not necessarily be warranted, but, you know, psychologically, you go, what's changed since the last time we played? You know, Dragonborns previously played against Dingtas and won. It was a bit of a cheesy game. I think we already discussed that lightly. Mm -hmm. But they beat Dra you know, Dingtas, and that's a fairly, you know, large statement as Indeed. such. They did lose prior to that to Denova and Evil Panda Squad, but that's a nice finishing point for those guys. And then if they lose this one, that's going to start making questions arise with them, I can imagine, going, you know, nothing's changed since we, when we played Dingtas. What's that element that's been added in? Ah, oh, it's that new player. So there's so much pressure on this guy. If he does manage to perform, I can't wait to see what he can bring, because certainly all eyes on him now. And uh, to come at this point as well, it's, it's a very high-pressure moment for him. I'm, uh, I almost feel for him a little bit there. And, you know, it's, it's going to be hard for them to make sure their mentality's not, you know, completely focused onto that one player going, you know, he didn't perform well, or too pressured for him, and he kind of stumbles a bit. But nevertheless, they're, they're an experienced team. They've, they've felt the kind of wrath of chopping and changing players before, and they've always dealt with it quite well. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they're not going to feel too much pain there, and maybe you can shine and really step up. But guys, I think we're ready for those tank picks. Let's have a little look to see what they're going for so far. And uh, why don't you take us through this? Okay, so we've got a new team, so perhaps we can see a new setup here. Um, although it's, it's questionable. I mean, uh, the best thing about being a new team is that you can watch uh, all, the play, all the play days, all the replays, etc., and really find out the weakness of the various teams and, and even find out new uh, inventive lineups. So perhaps OM Injection will uh, bring something new to the table and perhaps that will be the meta for Season 3. Always keep that in mind. But so far, double AMX 90 from Dragonborns, uh, OMI, OM Injection responding with two T1s. Uh, two Licht Tractors from... Uh, Licht Tractors from... Um, uh, Dragonborns, it's it's their standard pick for this map. Uh, Life Tractor, I should pronounce it. Uh, double AMX-390 from the side of uh, Ohm Injection. So at the moment, two T1s, two AMX-1390s apiece. Double T69 for Dragonborns. AMX-1390, T69 from Ohm Injection. Uh, and the last two picks for Dragonborns will be the AMX-1390. And the last one for Ohm Injection will be double AMX-1392. So it, it steps. So we're expecting fast lineups. You know, we've got three AMX-1390s on the side of Dragonborns. We've got two AMX-3 AMX-1390s. 90s as well on the side of uh, Ohm Injection. That's really for the flanks. That's really for getting around the other team and really getting behind them and doing the damage. Um, so interesting to see how they play that. WZ132 as well coming in for OM Injection. That's a Chinese tier 8 medium tank. That's a 250 average damage. Good penetration. Good, uh, good reload time. About six seconds. Um, so it, it's. I never really enjoyed it as as a player, and I don't really know why. I mean, it's good at anti uh, autoloader, but. I've never really seen it being played really well so far, so I, I'm hoping Mayu, who's going to be playing that tank, uh, does play it really well. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. The lineups are pretty similar in many respects, and it's just going to be about skill and tactics. Yeah, and that's what I like to see. And I'm looking at Dragonborns to really step up here and show why they were in the league this time around and prove their worth going forward into the next one. We're going to find out here on Steps. And welcome into Steps. It will be our first map. And in the blue, starting in the south, it will be the new guys to the scene or the returning guys, you could say, to the relegation phase. It is OMI or OM Injection, if you want to be that fussy. But in the north, in the golden, it's our almost standard heroes. We've grown to love them. It is the Dragonborns going head to head. Now, we've seen a lot of, um, well, drawish games and passive games recently. But do you think we're going to be seeing that from these guys here? 
Um, I'm not so sure. I think uh, Ohm Injection are not a passive team. Okay, they do like the camping a little bit, but they're nowhere near as uh, what we had last time. Lucky Karaki uh, drawing six or seven times on, on Prokhorovka. So we're not going to see that, I don't think, guys. Uh, do not worry. Bayer being the first one to be spotted out in Ohm Injection. Interestingly enough, he isn't playing the AMX 3090 or T69. First shot coming out, first kill for Thorus 1, the team leader of Dragonborns, taking out Bayer. So straight away, uh, Dragonborns have the advantage of, of, of the T1 going down for um, injection. So that's not going to be uh, too much of a difference, but if it came, comes down to a cap race or, or stopping the cap or, you know, a, a 1v1 situation between the T1s, then that could be really key. So, um, yeah, that could come into the equation. But at the moment, Dragonborn's playing pretty passively. Uh, um, injection a little bit more offensive, though. Yeah, they certainly are. They are making way up that one and two line. The first T69 has been spotted. First shot goes flying out. Does not connect onto Jasmar or Durs. Um, BN96 just darting up and down that hill. Further fire now coming in. These OMI guys are not stopping. Really bringing the fight to Dragonborns. You can see that now they're getting themselves in a bit of a tricky situation, to say the least. Thoris and Threaten now in those 1390s peering round. Indeed, uh, Thoris is trying to get some shots onto uh, Dare. Uh, and Jezmar's coming in, but Mayu's going to come around from behind though. Yeah, and bear in mind, M. Mayo and BN1696 have pushed round. Fire being laid out onto Yukai, taking down fairly low, 479. And now the reinforcements have arrived. The T69 is there. Great opening, real kill coming in. Taking down the T69 for the Dragonborn side. Oh, and following up with another. The Lol Tractor does go down. Thoris now in trouble. 108, backing away underneath that defilade to try and readjust. But further fire coming in. Jesmar is now the target, though. 81 HP. Uncro receiving a shell as well as now the fire is coming in left, right, and center. Mayo pushing further forward. That WZ-132 is not sitting back for a second. Charging round. He's trying to catch up to Thoris, driving into the eyesights of Jesmar, possibly. He could land a shell, but he's just targeting Threaten instead. And here we go. Jesmar does find the kill. It's actually Sarah's to find Thoris. But Threaten finally dealing with the ever-so-aggressive Mayo. And now the real slugging battle continues, but I can't help but to feel Oemaya feeling the benefits here. Indeed. Ungro's on a couple of good shots. Ezeraz is down to 149, though. Uh, but it looks like Dragonborns have their roster back. It's a, look at these two guys. They're just running around the uh, the rockets. Whoever's going to reload first will win this one. Or Crux will be able to ram them out. But Serres is coming in. Yeah, Serres into the fight now. 105 left on Crux there. And he goes down swiftly. Serres, a great set of frags already. And now only Uncro and Ram 13 left up against three members of the OMA side, but whether or not they can find them and get this one down. Oh, BN96 caught off guard there. Uncro just peering around in time and getting that first shell connected. This is a tense situation. The HP is, you know, quite favoring towards Uncro, but we have to see how they play this one out. They're dancing around the mound now. Ring a ring of roses as such as now Uncro makes his presence known and the fire is coming in. He's getting fire rained down from that lol tractor. You said it can do work and it is. Oh, lovely combination between the two. And Uncro will finishing, will finish almost the remains of the OMI. So aggressive side. Now Seraz has to do some more work. Three kills already. Let's see if he can get four and take down Uncro. How do you think the situation is going to go down? Well, Ram's doing a lot of damage in that T uh, least tractor, life tractor. So uh, that gun finally coming into use guys good to see dragonborns thinking with their head with their lineup to the left we have a, a techno wolf coming in with his t1s he's trying to get, bleed some damage from uncro uncro will take the base ram not doing the damage ram not taking him out but at the moment look at this two versus one dragonborns taking it back Amazing to see. Dragonborns uh, have their old roster back. This is Uncro back. This is Thoris back. Uh, Crooks is obviously in the, in the season ready, but now Sarah's is going to come in. Yeah, Sarah's oh. tried to challenge, but absolutely decimated by Uncro. And Dragonborns, welcome back, folks. They handled an extremely aggressive team then. OMI went hell for leather. They got a massive advantage. Sarah's got three, I think, then. And I thought this is almost game over straight away. Dragonborns without confidence isn't Dragonborns. They just fall apart. And then they turned it around. Yep. How the hell did they manage that? Well, that's what Dragonborns have been missing all this season, too, guys. Um, well, okay, at the beginning of the season, they had their original roster, so they had yep. a couple of good results in the game. Um, remember, those, the original roster is the one who got fourth in, in season um, in season one, and they went, well, they went 3-2 to Virtus Pro. Well, Virtus Pro won 3-2 in, in DreamHack, so that was a pretty good result for them anyway. For sure. uh, but, you know, 
now they have uh, Uncrow back. Uncrow is probably one of the best T69 players in the league. You could see that then. Uh, <laughs> just fantastic player. Uh, they've got Thoris one back, their team leader. Um, so now Magus is not having to team lead. They have that combination going together. It's not just one guy team leading, not one just one guy calling on the shot, but they have two. And Thoris is just brilliant. Um, such a nice guy as well. Um, good to see him back. And I think if, if, if Dragonborns can have that player skill combined with their kind of, they are good at tactics, let's be honest. They have got some good tactics. Definitely. Then, then they can pull out wins because they were at a disadvantage and they had two tier eights against one. But all it took was one skillful player, Uncro, to come along and say, no, I'm not going to take this. I know I have the advantage here in terms of HP. I'm going to move around. I'm going to take down the AMX 3090. Then I'm going to wait for the other one because I know it's reloading. That's what it takes to be a good player. Knowing the situation you're in and reading it and then just reacting to it perfectly. And they did that. So congratulations to Dragonborns on that first map there. I was a little bit unsure on how that was going down. I got a little bit worried. But the second map is lined up. It will be Himmelsdorf. Now, last time I saw OMI facing off against anyone, they lost to Evil Panda Squad on this map. Yeah. And, and in some fashion as well, they went all down the one and two line. They went fairly aggressive as well, completely focused on it, didn't put anyone on the hill either, and just went out for it. And it did not pay off. Now, Seeing how aggressive they went on steps, do you think we might see something like that here? Or do you think Himmelsdorf has evolved too far to see something like that again? Um, I think it could be either way. Um, they went aggressive on steps, but they didn't win. So True. maybe they are, well, they thought they were going to go aggressive on Himmelsdorf, but they're questioning their tactics now because their first one didn't go so well. Mm. Um, but that's the worst thing you can do. You, know, you play, start doubting yourself. Exactly. Play to your game, play to your strategy you've been training, which they obviously have been, um, and then at least you can say at the end of the day, okay, we, we, we lost because the other team was better, not because we doubted ourselves and we started playing you know, a style we're not used to. So if, you, if they want to go offensive, they should go offensive. Uh, they shouldn't take that first result uh, in any kind of um, bad light. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping they do go offensive. But um, if they've improved, then that push will at least work. That's, that's for sure. I, I want to see how they've evolved. That's the one thing I love about these seasons is that we do see teams progressing. We saw it you know, last week. Um, you know, Lucky Karaki, the way they started out was great. I, I think the middle section, I'm going to just wipe from my memory. If you saw the Twitter picture of us with the glasses on and what looked like the uh, Men in Black kind of yeah. uh, memory wipe, that's what happened. It's gone now. But uh, you know, they started off fantastically, but they are getting underway into the tank picks as my producer looks at me going, get into the tank picks. Stop waffling, Lauren. So why don't you take us through what we're seeing here on Himmelsdorf? So, yeah, we are on Himmelsdorf. We're not expecting anything too unusual. Um, this is your archetypal city map. Uh MX-5100s, IS-3s, perhaps a 110 if we're lucky. Uh, double, two, double T1s from both teams at the beginning, so um, Dragonborn's realizing that a fast T1 is, is better than that Licht Tractor um, for any kind of push. Um, but again, it's, it's about how these guys use their tanks as opposed to what tanks they're using. Uh, the next pick will be a double IS-3 from uh, OM Injection, double AMX-5100 from Dragonborn's OM Injection, and getting another double uh, AMX-5100, uh, Dragonborn's double IS-3, T69 from both teams, so uh, on the side of Injection, we got double AMX 5100, double IS3, T69, double T1. Well, Dragonborn's double AMX 5100, T69, double IS3, two, two T1. So, mirrored line in every way, shape, or form. So, it's going to be at tactics and skill. Yeah, and that's what I like to see. Um, we've seen, you know, a little, you know, some cheesy strats on Himmelsdorf, and they generally get punished, which almost keeps me happy in this. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's nice to see that really um, clinical. In, display of World of Tanks in this map. So, all eyes onto OMI now. They have to claw this one back. They had a fantastic start in steps. Couldn't quite pull it off at the end. But let's see what they can bring here on Himmelsdorf. And welcome into the second map here in the golden yellow. Starting to the north, it will be Dragonborns, who picked up the first map of Steps, but it was no easy feat. But in the south, it will be OMI in blue, trying to bring this game back all even. And let's see what they have in store this time. See how they're starting out and see what they have, you know, 
lined up for this game. So what are we seeing early on from these two? Well, it's standard stuff from OM Injection. They're just pushing out into all flanks. That's what you do from the south specifically. Um, they're just trying to find every single route of attack and just block it. So heavy tanks to the right, heavy tanks in the middle, uh, heavy tanks to the left. Uh, usually, um, you know, if, if a team wants to push up the left, which is you see quite a lot from the south, then you put your AMX 5100s there. But uh, Dragonborns, on the other hand, something pretty uh, unusual. I mean, we don't usually see the two IS-3s right up the Banana Road like there. They're, they're usually behind this mound here, so Thoris and Threat and have a, a kind of a peculiar job. Maybe they're expecting Ohm Injection to do that push up the Banana again. They want those two IS-3s to deal with that average 390 damage with the BL-9 straight off the bat. So, I mean, it could do 800 damage, which is pretty much uh, over half HP of a normal IS-3 and, and certainly over half HP for a AMX 5100. So Dragonborns sitting back, having every uh, area kind of blocked, every area kind of uh, uh, staged off. Uh, T69 on the hill with a T1. First bot's going out. Techno Wolf being spotted. Mayo as well on T69. So Dragonborns straight away have the information that, that T69 isn't going to be playing for that hill tactic. So Dragonborns can push up the hill. They can use their T1 uh, and perhaps even push off into their base. Yeah, we're going to have to see how they read this situation, really. Um, we do see that T-69 gaining presence on the hill. So that might be uh, coming to fruition almost. I cannot speak today. So we have to find out if BN-96 and his dear old Tier 1 can somehow <laughs> hold them off. I highly doubt it. I think he's even aware of it. Backing away a touch. And now with that in mind, do you think OMI realize this has happened? Um, they, they put all their IS-3s down towards the three line rather than banana. They left it completely open. Why do you believe that is? Because I've never seen this before. Looking at Jesma, looking at Saraz, they're, they're in a completely different position than what I'm used to. Is this part of their strategy, do you believe? Or why are they doing this? I think they're hoping that BN uh, discourages a uh Dragonborns from pushing too far along the hill and perhaps off it because the, all the positions OMI is right in. Um, if Uncro gets himself into a spot just in front of us here, I can show you, um, then he can just snipe them from behind. Those IS-3s are pretty much sitting ducks for that uh, T-69. As soon as Uncro unloads those four shells, if he hits every one, uh, it's going to be about a K damage for Dragonborn. So, yeah, he can just sit here. The whole of OMI is pretty much just sitting along their IS-3. You can see that the line of fire is absolutely perfect. Cesar has been spotted out. So so I think Magus is going to be trying to take out BN. He does a couple of shots, misses a couple as well. Um, but he goes down to 69. BM's down to 78. So at the moment, uh, Magus took a lot more damage than BN. Um, but then again, Dragonborns have the information. They just need to move forwards uh, and see what they can do with it. Yeah, and Magus already evening the score there, taking BN down to 55 HP. So the little T1 battle will continue by the hill. It may seem little now, but the, you know, the effects of you know, which way that goes is huge as well for especially OMI. As you said, it'll open up a massive bit of vision um, that could really cost them quite a large amount. And with that T69 for Dragonborns on the hill, it's, it's going to be dangerous. BN is literally the linchpin right now, and he is in a little bit of trouble. He's got to be careful. He's going to try and get out of there, I believe. He's backing off a fair way, but he still needs to keep eyes on. And why aren't OMI rotating someone around here to deal with this pressure? Because surely if he falls, they're completely open on that 9 and 0 line. Yeah, that's true. Um, I'm not really sure. I think they're quite happy just to keep someone distracted. Ankur does the first shot. I think he's going to get another one, 238. He's just going to continue. I don't know. He's, he's missing his shots, hitting some shots. Dr. Tour is on 16 HP as well. So there's been two kind of uh, T1 battles as well. So uh, at the moment, Dragonborns don't have the HP advantage on the T1s, which is definitely not a good thing because uh, if those T1s go down early on Himmelsdorf, they could be really in trouble. Yeah, but that has forced a bit of a reaction coming out from OMI. They are making their push now along that 2 and 3 line. Jesma, uh, Vija... And Durs, all there, then joined by the IS-3. Jesma receiving another shell, no damage caused. Yukai will find Techno Wolf, the other Tier 1. But uh, now we can see the fire coming in. Dr. Tor is there, as is Yukai. Now, this could be uh, real trouble for OMI. They've almost stopped in their tracks, and this seems almost reminiscent of the last time they played here in the relegations. Jesma finding the opposing Tier 1. That's Dr. Tor down, but Thoris with massive vision onto exactly what OMI are trying. And what are they going for here? I think they're just going to try and push and see if they can put some pressure onto Dragonborns, see if they can force a mistake. They know the T69 of Uncro is probably on the hill. You can see he's pushing off. He, he doesn't want 
want to get himself uh, too far into the enemy base in case there is like a T69, not a T69, like an, an AMX 5100 to take him down because obviously the T69 versus the T69, they can't kill each other with those four shells, so it's kind of useless. That's why you see AMX 3090s countering them so well. Um, but Dragonborns, uh, Magus and BN still have that fight. And I think regardless of the push OMI did, um, this fight between, Drag between Magus and BN is still the most essential part of the battle. Yeah, and, and who'd have thought it? You see these big tanks eyeing each other up, but as you said, it can come down to just those small tanks, those small linchpin moments, and Magus and BN exchange, and we do see BN actually gain the better of Magus. The real man who made so many massive plays for Dragonborns has gone down, but the other threat that you do have a team leader now with Vision across, but Seras has also received a shell, knocking him back in that IS-3, threaten just exchanging back and forth, and you can see they're both eyes on, but will he expect my in the T69 to be pushed up through that middle section to possibly come in if necessary. I don't know, but you can see the AMX 5100s now joining in. It looks as though they're kind of lining up for a bit of a push here, and it might be uh, Thorus to receive a lot of damage. Let's see if they can pull this one off. Thorus has almost caught a whiff of what's planned, as has threatened, and they made their way around. Durs now receiving the first shell, not down to 1070 as they're continuing the push forward. Shells raining in, not actually connecting. They've spotted Uncro as well. They're trying to get the shells. Oh no! Mayo and Durs piling up here. Now Dragonborns showing their face. Uncro taking down to 402. Threatened coming into the matter as well. But now Dragonborns making their way through towards that courtyard. Thorus being slapped backwards. Mayo and Burge lining up laying down the fire. Durs going down low. 190 only. He does actually drop down to Yukai there. Now Yukai moving on to Mayo. Burge is now left alone as further fire comes in. They're being ripped apart as we speak as now Mayo with his back against the wall goes down as well. Put out of his misery and Dragonborns just engulfed the entirety of OMI in their push there. Now only of those really big tanks are left. The IS-3s are now up against the opposition of Dragonborns rather than a full side against a full side. Yeah, Dragonborns just need to push on to these IS-3s. They're waiting for the AMX-51s to reload, which they'll undoubtedly do. Uh, Threatens on another shot, but it's, it's two against one, these two. Yeah, Sarah is now only down to 36 HP, trying to let Jesmar take or pick up the mantle almost. Does get a shell onto Threaten there. Oh, Threaten onto Jesmar. It's a very close situation as he will go down. There's now Jesmar left with four to deal with. Back left and center. He is going down no matter what. The cap is underway, but it's too little too late. Dragonborns once again stamping their authority all over Himmelsdorf. Curious tactics from OMI, but they certainly were not pulled off, as now Doom is just approaching to BN, and it's only a matter of time now. And there we go, Uncro will just ram the remains, and it does seem as though Dragonborns were almost prepared for that, we seem. It, uh, they really handled that very well. I. I I don't know quite what to say about that. The exchange, mm. it seemed fragmented from OMI when they pushed in. They didn't push in all together as such. It was more of a, let's put three here, hope we catch that one off guard. Maybe they thought Thoris or Threaten was on their own, yep. holding the banana. And as soon as they moved on it, it seemed as though the entirety of Dragonborn just went, hi, we're here as well. Why did they just go in you know, segments almost? Why didn't they put everything together if they wanted to do that push? I don't think they meant to go in segments. I'm pretty sure their team leader said, okay, guys, uh, we know Dragon Ball's in this little area. Let's push three tanks around there with our main firepower, the T69, a couple of, uh, a couple of an IS-3 and, and a couple of AMX-51. Just leave the IS-3 and the other AMX-51 back. Uh, mm -hmm. And let's push them. Let's push one round the one side, the other round the other side, and let's just pinch them in. But the thing is, the three went forwards. Dragonborn saw it. They pushed around. Um, I think Thoris did a couple of shots into the side, got some good damage out. Uh, and then Dragonborn's collapsed on them immediately. They saw the weakness, they collapsed on them immediately. And then those two guys at the back, way too late to the party. They should have gone round straight away. They should have engaged them. Yeah. They should have distracted them. At least got a couple of, uh, couple of the Dragonborn's distracted. In my opinion, actually, I think uh, OMI should have pushed their main tanks along, not the outside of the road, not the square part, but the inside along that place. And then you send a couple of fast tanks, a couple of AMX-51 just around the other side because it's got it's got less cover so it takes quicker uh, and the AMX-51 just can engage from high but where you have loads of cover you want those IS-3s, you want the uh, high alpha damage um, you don't want to be sending it into the flanks because as you saw the AMX-51 just piled in all around they got the fire off into the side and it was pretty much game over from that point onwards.
Yeah, so nice bit of analysis coming in there from my lovely co-caster, Oliver. And we, I, I feel for OMI because they're actually playing fairly aggressive, and I like that in the team, and they are yeah. willing to bring the fire to the opposition. They're not just sitting back and waiting for it to happen to them. They're not afraid of challenging one of the bigger teams, but it's just not paying off for them in any way, shape, or form, which is slightly upsetting to see because it's nice seeing a bit of fresh blood coming back into this who you know may have been missing for a season, but they're still out there. They're still working on it, and it's... It's proving a point that the WOT Pro League does give you the best, but it's also a shame to see you know these teams struggling as well because they're giving everything they've got, mm. but it's just not quite enough against the big boys. But it's certainly not over. We do have another map coming up. It will be Prokhorovka. Now, what do you think is going to go down this map? I'm not a fan of it anymore after what happened before. <laughs> all right, this map kind of makes me a bit nervous. I get you know sweaty hands about it all. But uh, what what do you think we're going to see here from the picks as such? Is it going to be our standard kind of Prokhorovka, or do you think we might see a little bit of difference added in? Well, uh, so far Dragon Ball have played pretty standard tactics, um, uh, just their kind of normal style. Although, you know, as I said, their, their whole lineups and everything have kind of help, helped their team so far. Um, yep. But some little birdie tells me that Dragonborns have got a completely new tactic for Prokhorovka, ah. um, which is a pretty good tactic, I think. But it, the question is, can they execute it? You know, with, with players going on holiday for so long, you know, they get rusty. The whole synergy between the team gets rusty. So it's gonna, all going to be about that execution for Dragonborns. And this is the only game, I think, so far, where Dragonborns are actually going to take the fight to OM Injection. It's always been the other way around. Oh, OM Injection's wow. always been the one to give it to them. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's that's their okay. play. That's their play. So uh, yeah, I'll go through the tank lineups to, to let you guys know what's going on. Uh, we got a Leaf Tractor, a Light Tractor for uh, Dragonborns, AMX 1390. T1 AMX 1390 for OM Injection Dragonborns, another T1 AMX 1390, and OMI, another T1 and AMX 1390. But here we go. These are the interesting picks here. A Jag Panther 2, which is that tier 8 uh, German uh, tank destroyer, the one with the Uber, the Uber gun. I think it's um, 490 average damage, so pretty much the Jag Tiger's um, gun, the, the first one at least. Uh, then they, the, this is the really interesting part. We've seen uh, Dragonborns pick that Jag Panther 2 before. But we haven't seen a team pick this since the beginning. They have picked the Lorraine 15551. Um, actually, I think the Jagdpanther 2 is a tier 7, but whatever. Uh, they picked a, a Lorraine 15551. That's that tier 7, uh, tier 8 now, actually. Uh, French artillery, the one which was so predominant in Season 1. So predominant since its release, to be honest. Absolute beast. Um, and you can see that uh, Crook straight away saying troll or low. He's, he's, he's wants to look at the faces of Ohm Injection at this point. Um, but yeah, it's going to be how they can use that artillery. If they can connect the shells, Dr. Uh, Magus will be playing that indeed. Not to Dr. Tor, which is quite strange because uh, he is that resident artillery player in most cases. Um, but yeah, if they can use it correctly, it's going to be insane. But if Ohm Injection just push forwards, they do some offensive action, that could be that could spell disaster for that lineup. But again, another Jag Panther two for Dragonborns. This is really peculiar. Two Jag Panther twos, a Lorraine one five five one, a, a Leech Tractor, and two AMX thirty ninety as well as Doctor Tour playing that T one. This is the most odd lineup I have seen in my entire life. So they got the firepower, they got the <sighs> speed, and then they've got the damage to to kind of mitigate for any push that. Ohm Injection does. Ohm Injection has gone something completely normal here. Trip, uh, double AMX 90 triple T69, double T1. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I honestly can't call it on this one because it's, it's almost too weird for me. It's almost too weird for laughter. That's, that's saying something. Um, I, I don't know what to make of this. This is the first time I can probably say that I've seen artillery used properly. I don't know if I can call this properly. Yeah. But when it's not, you know, a um, complete. 10 on, no, 5, no, I can't even speak, 7 on 7 kind of battle of arty. This is the first time I'm going to see it used. So, guys, I'm curious. I bet you are at home as well. Oh, am I going back to basics, whereas Dragmord switching up here on Prokhorovka. So welcome back into what could be the third and final map here for OMI if they don't step it up. And they're facing off against a rather curious Dragonborns who will be starting to the north in the gold, whereas in the south it will be OMI. Now, 
why don't you take us through what we're seeing so far? Because I want to look at your screen more than mine right now just to see what the hell is going on. So we're expecting these two uh, peculiar picks. Uh, well, three, I guess. But let's talk about the tank destroyers first. Uh, Thoris and Uncro playing those two. Hold on. We um, are seeing a stop and a restart here. Oh. So we might have to restart this one just because I think... Uh, yeah, I think someone's had a bit of an issue then. Yeah, Thoris is disconnected. Yeah. So we will just sort that out. So, guys, um, let us know your thoughts towards this. You guys at home, okay? You play this more than I do, right? I, I enjoy this game. I, I, I enjoy it a fair bit. But I don't play it enough to see things like RT being randomly used in this sort of aspect. Mm -hmm. I'm nowhere near good enough to be playing in an esports um, way. And I'm just kind of a bit baffled here, if I'm completely honest with you guys. But you guys at home, last time we saw Prokhorovka, we saw it going ridiculous, basically. We saw draws all around. Yeah. Now, Dragonborns have basically come up with a lineup that almost nullifies that happening. There's no way there'd be that many draws with that much artillery involved, on paper, in theory, let's just say. I don't know what to expect from this. I really d I don't know how to read into this one in any way, no shape, idea. or form. It's... I, I mean, in, in a tactical sense, I guess, um, what, what Dragonborns is basically going for is, is saying, okay, we take an artillery. Um, uh, and the thing about artillery in, mm. in this patch is the fact that, okay, it's not actually that bad. It still hits most of the shots. I say about, it hits about 90%, perhaps 80% of its previous shots. Um, but the problem is, if the other team just pushes on, then that 10 to 20% means so much. So Dragonborn's just taking two high damage tank destroyers like that, says, mm. okay, you guys, if we're gonna, if we're gonna pump out shots, at random blind shots, um, then you push on to us, then we're going to use our two deadly tank destroyers and we're going to blow you apart. So that kind of mitigates that whole push they want to do, um, which is quite interesting to see. Although I'm, I'm also a massive skeptic of tank destroyers, I'm not sure uh, exactly why they're in the game in, in many respects. At, t at tier 8, it's okay. As you push up towards those tier 9s and 10s, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what they're doing. Um, but if Dragon Balls can use them correctly, if they can get even, let's say, four shells out, two between two, you know, that could be 2k damage, which is, which is more than enough to do, all the, more than enough to win the game for them. Uh, and Magus, if he just does a couple of splash damages, mm. maybe one or two direct hits, even blind shotting the T1s, then straight away Dragon Balls will have the advantage, um, and then the tank destroyers can just do the rest. Yeah. Uh, we are just letting them know to get into the game, so we'll be jumping back out into that in just a minute. I want to see how much, you know, your prediction or your read of this um, kind of tactic actually comes mm -hmm. to light, because logically, I think you're correct. Um, I, I think it's the only way you can kind of read into this. So I can't wait to see how this one pans out, guys. I hope you're in the same boat as we are here, because we're both kind of not sure what we're going to be seeing now. I'm still a bit like, I don't know, but hopefully all is good and we're going to see a great game with a little bit of a twist on it for once. It's not your usual day of World of Tanks here. We are going to be going back into the third and possibly final map if I, I can't step it up. Heat myself. They will be starting to the south in that blue color, whereas in the north, the gold and yellow will be occupied by Dragonborn. So let's have a little look and see what we're in for here and see how your guys are lining up. Yeah, they're just going towards the forest area. They're pushing up uh, with uh, Magus. He's obviously playing that artillery. He's going forwards. We've got Thoris and Uncro in the Jagdpanther 2s, just pushing towards the green side. You can see um, those two have gone up. Uh, Magus is going to take himself up behind a bush. Um, and Uncro and, and Thoris are doing exactly the same. They've gone behind the bush. They're, they're just going to be protecting Magus. As I said, that will be their Ooh. main thing. The first shell goes <laughs> up. So you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? 477 damage coming oh out from Thoris. Word. Fantastic. And now Omni are just pushing in. They're playing straight oh into Dragon Balls right God. now. They are playing into the hands of Dragonborns. As you said, Jesmar and BN being smashed to pieces almost. Knocked down to 5-2-2 and 6-2-3. They've got to be careful. Further fire now coming in. Jesmar is in a little bit of a pickle. Knocked down even further by Dr. Tor, of all people, who does get a bit of revenge coming in the form of Durs taking him out. <laughs> but that artillery, oh my <laughs> word, folks. You doubted it throughout the season, but right now we are seeing it rip apart the AMX 1390s for OMI. I don't know what to make of this. These guys can't sit still. They're constantly under pressure. 
And you can see why. One, two, two left on these guys. They know what they're up against, but how the hell do you intend to get back into this one as the shells are just raining in around them? Uh, it's just incredible how much damage uh, Thoris has been able to do. He has actually been spotted, so he's actually going to take a lot of damage. He might even go down here. Yeah, Thoris is in trouble, as you said. One, two, three being dealt. He's being damaged even further. He does get taken down. Does perfect work so far. Two of the opposing team have now been obliterated by his hands alone, but that's certainly not the entirety of the threat dealt with from Dragonborns. These guys, they still have a lot of uh, tricks up their sleeve, to say the least. And, uh, well, OMI are looking a little bit worse for wear. Looking across the board, so much HP has been just chipped away at by uh, the Dragonborn side that it won't take much to do them in. And, oh, Mayo again being taken down to 20 HP. This is unbelievable what we're seeing here. I can't believe people have doubted Artie when we're seeing it used so well. Now, all they need is a light breeze to take them out almost. Yeah, 20 HP is, is, is just, you need to blow on them pretty much. But, you know, at the moment, the uh, Jag Panther 2 has gone down pretty much, uh, pretty low. He, he's he's got to be careful because Thor has got focus down straight away, threatens down to 608 as well. Uh, Magus is uh, just going to have to back up his team. He hasn't done so much damage so far, uh, but still, he's done he's done a, a reasonable amount. He just needs to finish off the tanks. He needs to go for the ones on low HP. Um, we've got Mayu in his T69, 20 HP. He just needs to finish them off. Uh, spots coming out from Techno Wars to the left. Um, Dragon Balls need to take care of him really quickly because Magus could be in trouble. If he gets spotted out, uh, he's going to have to be dealt with by Uncro. But Uncro, he doesn't have a line of fight, uh, sight of here because the uh, buildings provide so much cover. It's a classic random battle um, position as Jezmar gets spotted out. Once again, Dra uh, Dra Dragon Balls from Magus tries to land another shot. Doesn't do it so successfully. Crux is going to push forward into his AMX 1390. Techno Wolf getting spotted once again. But threatening Crux, they look quite damaged here. Oof. Yeah, good exchange there. Finally, Magus does take down Durs. The man was d well, sorry, excuse me. Durs has taken down Magus, who was doing good work. But nevertheless, Durs has racked up a hat trick already, which is fairly impressive. But nevertheless, I'm, I'm looking at OMI, and they're not falling down yet. I want to see a bit of a move coming out from Dragonborns, and they heard me speak, and they have done exactly that. Crux now turning up, taking down Threaten. Um, I am lying profusely today, threatened taking down Mayo even. <laughs> Dear God, I cannot speak. But nevertheless, this is what we wanted to see from Dragonborns. They need to find the remains of OMI. They've done great damage, but those 1390s now need to kick into gear. Look at BN, only 122 HP now. Crux on the push. He's got to be careful. Those T69s uh, are not too far away, but... Oh, perfect timing for the RT to land on to Seras. 399 knocks him right down. And now we're just seeing this battle really coming into shape. Threaten, taking down Bajer. So really working them down, but the vast amount of firepower and bulk is still left alive for OMI, but they're, they're not looking too healthy. Well, it, it doesn't even matter in lots of respects because of that Jag Panther 2's insane 490 average damage. You know, what bulk HP do you have? You know, when it's dealing 500 HP, normally 500 HP for an MX 3090, you're still like, oh, okay, it's fine. It can still survive a firefight. But when you get one shot by a Jag Panther 2, it is no HP at all. So at the moment, I think the teams are pretty even. Um, but, you know, Dragonborns have taken a lot of hits. Uh, uh, Magus is the biggest one. If Magus didn't go down so early, uh, but Crook's going to go from the side. Crook's coming in from the side. As you said, the 3090 dealing damage, but now here comes the return fire. Did not expect Durs to be there. But Crux does manage to take down Sarahs, but does quickly replying back. So it's a nice exchange between these two. And Durs sitting on four kills now. This man is really stepping up. Yeah, good shots from him straight away um, at the moment. I think uh, Crooks is, is kicking himself a little bit. He should have stand behind a couple more bushes. Each bush provides, uh, well, at least 30 to 40% camo, depending on which one. But guys, you know, but this is bush tactics. Crooks should not have been where he was. He should have stand at least 50 meters behind a bush. It provides so much more camo because, the, you know, as soon as you shoot, the bush no longer provides camo. So if you're spotting out, spot the tank, move back. You have at least 10 seconds. Uh, move back 50 meters. Do the shots. Uh, make sure you're not spotted and then move back in. Crooks, if he did that, he would still be alive, folks. So uh, it is uh, three against two. Although Dragonborns probably, they, they have the advantage of that tank destroyer still. Um, you know, o OMI are definitely in the advantage position in this one. Yeah, and uh, all eyes on Durs for me in that T69. Waiting to see what he can do here, see if he can deal with the threat that, well, might be threatened, really. Uncro, as you said, is in a dangerous position as well, but oh my, with the upper hand here, you can see it in points, especially in the 3 minutes and 52 seconds. I'm waiting for the moves to be made. 
by the man you can see on your screen right now. I'm looking for Threaten to open this one up. He's daring to peer forward, and this could pay dividend now. He's going towards the likes of Jesmar and BN. Just going to skirt past, but... With uh, Durr still alive and kicking, catching on, he's clocked onto him. Can he get the fire down in time? Oh, he hasn't actually got the connection, as now he does. Threaten is going down, 3-5-5. Five, five. Oh, but Jesmar actually might fall. It's going to be down to the wire. Threaten has taken down Jesmar and brought it back all even until BN comes in with a slamming shot there. Just annihilating Threaten, leaving only Uncrow alive now. 1v2, and Durr still sitting on those four kills. It's a bit of a tough task for this guy. Yeah, I think Grand Crow was in the wrong position, though. I mean, uh, he's sitting on four kills, but he's definitely reloading, so he's got another at least 10 for 15 seconds. Um, but yeah, I think Uncro should have been around here, because then he would have been able to take down BN, who was sitting there, and he would have been perhaps been able to shoot, shoot Durs, who was uh, towards the right side of the tracks. Um, I think uh, he should have been there. He should have managed to get the shots out. At the point where Crooks pushed forwards, he could not help him. And guys, you need to always be protecting each other. You always need to be backing your teammates up, not in a position where you can do that, uh, which Uncro was, then what's the point of even him going forward? Crook should have done the damage and got yep. himself out of there instead of kind of suiciding. But he did get quite unlucky. Um, one of his shots only did 200 damage, which is uh, which is really pathetic considering you do <laughs> average of 240 on the AMX 1390. So really unlucky for Dragonborn so far in terms of the damage rolls uh, from the AMX 1390. Does being spotted once again, but if Uncro gets flanked, he'll be in trouble. Yeah, and this is what it can come down to, folks. This could keep OMI in the game here, and they need to get this if they want to have another try at getting back into the league. So it's a very much a tentative situation. First shot does miss from Durs. Skimming past Uncro. Very close situation now. You can feel the tension between these two. Uncro has to be careful. Nice shot onto Durs. Knocks him down to 877. He was sitting pretty for so long. So that's already working his favor. Further fine coming in. But will BN be able to kick into action in the right amount of time? Uncro pushing around. Trying to play this one correctly. You can't just challenge the likes of Durr's head on. But he's certainly going to be going for it. Let's see what he can do here. Uncle. Heading further around. This is going to be very, very interesting. If he actually <laughs> managed to pull this one off, he slipped out of the sight of Durr's. So this could give him a chance to actually get back into this one. Let's see if he can somehow pull this off. Uncro, great positioning there. Popping back up on the radar. He has managed to spot BN. And now here we go. Receives the first shell there. Knocked back to, to 920. And now very, very palpable tensity to the situation here. A minute left. Eight points in the lead for um, the uh, OMI team at the moment. So if OMI uh, do tick this one down to zero on the clock, then they will be going through. Uh, Uncro is going to come around onto Durs, but it's going to be impossible for him to flank because of the way tank destroyers work. They don't have a turret, so they can't do the side shots. They have to move the whole superstructure. You can see Bienz is kind of retreating at this point. He wants to get out of there. Durs needs another two shots. Uh, at least, well, pretty much two shots from uh, Uncro to go down, uh, unless Uncro gets very unlucky and does three shots. 30 seconds left on the clock still. It's a uh, kind of a tentative situation behind this rock. Uh, Uncro's not managed to get the better of Durs. Durs going to come round, misses his shot. Uncro tries to connect one, doesn't do so. Um, but 20 seconds, I don't think they can do it. No, the clock is certainly against them. OMI will just about manage to hold on to this one, I do believe. Uncro just giving up on that front and looking at BN for the answers. As now here comes the remainder. It is Durs from the rear, ramming the shells in there. 6 3 2 remaining. And now he's just pinned in, and it is GG. It's GG. For that match, at least. Yeah, for Omen, that map. Omen injection. Very good, good, very good play from them. Um, yeah. I didn't expect them to really win that one. Um, Dragonborns is set up. I, I thought it was it would have worked in lots mm. of respects. But then we can have a little look at Magus's damage yeah, um, and I see if he worth. really did anything. Okay, 866. It's it's reasonable. I mean, I've spoken to him before, and he thinks that if you're going to play artillery, you need to be at least need to be doing one and a half k to make it worth it. Yeah. Um, looking at the other tanks on the team, um, Thoris in, in his Jagdpanther two. 2044. That is impressive stuff. That is really good. That makes this tank more than worth it, considering it has only 1,150 HP. Uncro, a K damage for them. Not too bad as well, but 
Honestly, I think the Airmix 3090 is underperformed. Thoris uh, threatened 608. Um, Crooks 863. I think those two could have done more. Um, so maybe their lineup wasn't a problem. Maybe the Airmix 3090s um, just couldn't find their synergy with those two with those two strange picks, the two Yag Panthers. Um, so maybe if they changed that, I think they should have still pushed up behind OMI, put the Jag Panthers twos in front, mm. put the Airmix 1390s behind, had the artillery in the middle, and then just kind of like collapsed onto them in terms of firepower, not in terms of actual tanks. So um, an interesting tactic that it needs working on. Yeah, certainly. Maybe they're just a bit out of practice of even working with artillery because it's been a long time since you would have played with it, essentially. The entirety of the season has been played out with no artillery being seen. Mm -hmm. Since the patch updates, that no one's thought it viable. So maybe these tactics, they, they have gone, okay, guys, this seems like a good idea. Let's try and work this in. Let's try and get it ready for maybe season three if we get back in here. And they just haven't quite smoothed it out yet. And it did feel as though there was just a bit of lacking execution there. Exactly. But we are getting ready to go into the next tank pick, so let's have a little look to see what we are getting so far. So double T1s from both teams. We're expecting normal stuff from Ensk. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if these any these two, um, like the, the 110, the Chinese Tier 8 heavy tank. Uh, I'm unsure. I think uh, OMI perhaps could take it. They are a newer team, so they do prefer the new lineups. Although, you know, we saw Dragonborns just take the most peculiar lineup of Season 2, if, if you count relegations as Season 2. So um, uh, OMI just uh, cancelling their double AMX 5100. So uh, we got an IS-3 and AMX 5100 from the side of uh, Dragonborns. And they're going to be going for that normal lineup, in my opinion. I think they're going for the firepower. Uh, they like their they like the IS-3s quite a lot, and they've got some good players. Mm -hmm. Thoris plays it very well, as uh, as well as Threaten. So um, interesting to see if they, if they continue their string of good games on those tanks. Uh, next pick from OMI will be the IS-3 and the MX-51, so identical to Dragonborns. Um, I think it's going to be a normal lineup here. Um, but OMI being a new team, if they put, if they do something interesting, if they do push over the green zone, uh, they level themselves up here on the scoreboard. Obviously, Dragonborns is 2-1 ahead mm. uh, at this point in time. If they draw it up, then they go on to the next back because they have that confidence. And if they have that, then I think Dragonborns could just end up losing it and just be out of season three. It can come down to something as simple as that, really. It, and, and you've been wanting a team to try that green zone for quite some time. I have. And no one has, really. No one who's won has. I'm upset about that. I always say it, you know, push over the green zone, do something with the green zone. I mean, I just don't understand why no one does it. Um, I mean, obviously, there's disadvantage to every side, but it's not enough disadvantages for no one to do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, tank picking has continued. Uh, IS3, MX5100 from uh, Dragonborns and the same as uh, Omni, uh, OMI even. Um, and then we've got uh, T69 from both teams. So uh, mirrored lineup at this point, double AMX5100, double IS3, T69, double T1. Um, so it's it's going to be about how they can use those tanks if they want to use them in the city, if they want to push over that green zone, like I said, or perhaps <laughs> even something really strange like pushing straight up the uh, the kind of railroad area. Yeah, we're going to have to wait and see what they have in store for us here. Oh, um, I they, they're kind of getting known for their aggression. We didn't really see it in the first time we saw them in the relegations um, when the likes of Steven was casting it. But, you know, they, they've certainly adapted throughout that, that sort of change over in the downtime from when they, you know, they weren't in the major seasons or, you know, in the WT Pro Leagues. Um, and maybe they've got something ready on this map. I haven't seen them on here. Last time it was Himmelsdorf, Airfield, Mines and Abbey. So it's a very different kind of um, aspect to this. Himmelsdorf may be the only really relatable map, and they lost that. So it's, um, it, it's yeah. going to be hard to call. I'm going to have to just look at them in the moment and see exactly how they deal with this one, because we are going to get underway into Ensk. So welcome in to the fourth map here. It will be Ensk, the infamous city map, really. And in the south, in the blue, it will be OMI, sitting on the verge of defeat, almost clawing it back at the last second on the last map we saw, but still one map behind, essentially. They need to get this one up to bring it all even. Whereas in the north, in that golden color, we will be seeing our veterans almost by now. It is Dragonborn. So let's see what we're seeing initially from both of these sides. See exactly what we're in for. 
Uh, quite strange from Dragonborns, actually. Uh, Thoris has gone right into the middle as, as, as IS3, you can see there. Uncrow, thank you very much for listening to me going over towards the green zone. <laughs> you too, Doctor Two, I do love you too, guys. Uh, Yukai, Crux, uh, they're doing their normal stuff, pushing uh, towards the kind of base area. They've got the house area. They like playing around there. Threaten's gone forwards as per usual, though. It's quite strange to see from him because he's, he's often been caught out there and focused down. Uh, Omai have gone even more aggressive into the city, though. Yeah, they certainly have, making their way straight through towards those two and three lines. Already spotting out Yukai. Sarah's there in the IS3, joined by Jezmar again. The uh, IS3 duo almost and uh, just peering down towards Yukai and his 5100. And that's about it so far. But they are putting all their eggs in uh, a rather small basket or a small square, essentially. Um, there's not much else really around here. You do see the likes of Mayo sitting back in that T69, but he's going to have a lot to deal with. Uncro has taken down Techno to the Tier 1 for the OMI side, so already getting a little bit of an advantage, but nothing too huge yet. But you can see Mayo already backing away here as he does feel the pressure building from Dragonborns. Uncro will be going head-to-head -head against uh, Mayo any second now. That T69 will be completely responsible for whatever push Dragonborns does with their T1 and T69 here. Uh, I don't think uh, OMI wants to commit any more forces. They've pushed quite hard into the city, as you do see quite a lot from the south. But again, guys, I think this is all about how this T69 plays it. Is he going to stay there? Is he going to go back? Either way, he's got to be in the firefight when it counts. He's got to be there to support his team. His team needs that damage. His team needs that uh, auto load in there. So uh, Dragonborn's playing quite a risky setup, quite a risky strategy. So um, if they're going to be able to pull this one, I, I'm on the fence. I always think tanks that are on a limb like this are risking a lot. You know, you very rarely see it. But you can see Omai oh have just pushed straight back into their base. Do you think uh, Dragonborn's realize this or are they going to come back and just stay where they are? Well, they're going to find out soon enough. Uncro finding the other tier one as well, taking down BN. And you can see the other tier, well, the tier one for Dragonborns making their way through that sort of uh, city square. And they surely must be understanding the fact that now it's pretty clear. So, as you said, Dragonborns really cottoning on to the fact that Omai aren't in that aggressive pushed up position. They're making the most of it and making a bit of a move now. Uh, pushing forward straight into the city, trying to catch Ermai from behind. I mean, undoubtedly, Ermai would realize that Dragonborns do it. They are quite an experienced team. A couple of shells going off, nothing connecting. Sarah's been spotted out in that IS-3, as was Crooks in his AMX-5100. So uh, now Ermai will be fully aware of the fact that Dragonborns is going to be pushing forwards. And we've seen this before. Uh, we've seen p tanks push into the city uh, and get themselves focused down real fast. Um, we saw it last week in the relegation, on Monday even, in the, re in the previous relegation battle. Um, didn't go so well for the other team. They got themselves completely focused down. Dragonborns would have undoubtedly read that, would have undoubtedly have watched that match. Threaten's going to mm. push forward a little bit here. He could be in trouble. Yeah, indeed, Threaten could be. But as could Jezmar, they are just bottlenecked in here now between two buildings. Berger is pushing forward, but Thoris there as well. It's a big chunk of Dragonborns to be taking on, but they're muscling through. Crux was not close enough to come in from the side there to support his side. And now the fire is coming, but Berger pushing way too far forward, being caught completely off guard there. Not down to only 3 HP, a sliver of health left with him. But here comes the backup. Crux coming in from the side, managed to get a good bit of damage dealt towards Durs. The camp. The cap is underway, but look at this situation. They're so close. Yukai does get a little bit of damage, but swiftly removes the uh, likes of Berger from the battlefield, who got a little bit overzealous then and got caught off guard. Threatened now, being pressured down to 1168. As now Durs makes his way through. Oh, great shot going in from Thoris there in the IS3, pushing through at the last second almost, knocking him down to 369. As now Jesmar must pick up the mantle and lay down some suppressing fire, at least get a connection. And he's done just that, but will it? be enough. Yukai now under further pressure. You can see the likes of Sarah's now joining in as this is going to all go down this tiny square even with the base being captured. They've got to make their move and make it fast. Jesmar is not stopping. His eyes are right on Theris there. And now the clock ticking against some 10 second GG's are being said and Dragonborns are looking pretty darn good for this one. Dealing with the likes of OMI in a swift step. And now Seraz is in trouble. Seraz is in deep trouble. <laughs> I don't think he has any chance at all. Uh, GG's have been said. So Dragonborns, guys, uh, they will be staying in Season 3 with a 3-1 victory over the, uh, the, the, the unfortunate, I think, quite unlucky Ohm injection. The only map Dragonborns dropping was Prokhorovka. The only map they really tried something out of True. the ordinary. Um, but... 
you know, I want to talk about Dragonborns for a second here because that was the old team we saw, you know. They played so well as a team. Okay, Ohm Injection, perhaps they could have played a little bit more cautionary and played perhaps uh, some more standard tactics. But, mm -hmm. you know, the way Dragonborns moved together, you could see straight away as, as uh, Uncro and Dr. Tour spotted the, uh, the, the one line uh, along the, the bottom. Then the whole Dragon Balls kind of converged, and it was like watching water. They converged, they moved into the city. That is what we, you, we're used to seeing from Dragonborns. Um, so nice to see that they're getting back to their old style. Nice to see they're getting their old players back as well. Um, so moving into Season 3, it's, it's, it's looking for happy days for that team. Yeah, it's nice seeing them finally kind of um, gelling as a collective. And they really show us a good show then. It's nice seeing them even bringing back a bit of arty just to spice things up. You know, but... Didn't pay off for them that time, but nope. still, it's, it's certainly worth a try. But guys, we are not anywhere near done here. We've got another game on the way. It will be Alpha up against Spale, so do stick around for that. But we want to know how your predictions went and who did well and who might be getting a bit of gold coming towards them because, uh, sadly, I didn't have time to vote. I wish I could. I, I quite like gold. We all like gold. But uh, only you guys at home seem to be able to win it, which is deeply upsetting to me. It breaks my heart deep down. And I know the certain lady who uh, might be you know, known as the social media guru to some. It is the one and only Melly to take us through your thoughts and your predictions towards us. Well, 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 the chat was exploding. The comment section was exploding. It, it was, tanks were exploding. <laughs> oh my, oh wow. my. <laughs> Two puns, oh my God. Um, yes, Grangborns. Pretty clear, the community darling. Mm -hmm. Everybody was cheering for them. Goddamn Magus. And <laughs> <laughs> the Magites or whatever. That's why, <laughs> that's why I decided to give out three bonus codes because we had such a great participati uh, participation and so many um, people that actually uh, handed hand in a result, a possible result. But Joseph and... Tiro, congratulations, the Facebook winners, and we have a Twitter, a Twitter winner as well. That's Pravis. Congratulations, you're getting a bonus code for guessing the exact outcome of the match, right? And um, I have loads of submissions for the cheer cheerful contest. Really? Maybe, maybe we could sh uh, show some of them I after think the break. Oh, yes. So keep keep them coming. The cheerful contest is still running till the end of the show. You will have the chance to win up to 5k gold and a bonus code. And um, just just grab, grab a paper, grab a pen and start drawing something nice. Take a picture, upload it somewhere, put the link in the comments. And I will upload it in, in our Facebook album where you can have a look to, uh, t through all the submissions we already have. And... Yeah, with a bit of luck, you're getting gold and tanks and everything. <laughs> gold and tanks so and exciting. everything. Yeah. That's everything you want in life, really, isn't it? Gold, tanks and everything. I thought she said golden tanks. I was about to say. I'd quite like a golden there tank. There is actually a golden tank. Is it really gold? It's like it, no, platinum no. gold no, it's, looking. No, it's not actually gold. Don't it is, lie to me, then. It is pixels. But it's, I think it's a Type 59. I'm not sure if it's like a developer... Um, version or something, but it, it's completely golden. It looks pretty incredible. I'm not, it's, it's Big pimpin tank. It's, I want that tank. I want that tank. Uh, if anyone could send me that tank, please. Burbo. We'd all fully appreciate that. We can all roll <laughs> out together. Burbo, please, Burbo. But guys, obviously, we've had a little bit of a social media round up there. You saw a great game to kick you off with. Sadly, O Injection won't be into the next season, but we will be seeing Dragonborns return, and they really showed us why. They showed us some good class Indeed, there. Yeah. It was nice seeing the old Dragonborns. You said it before. I can't help but say it again. It is nice seeing them back to that kind of um, consistent form, that lovely fluid play that they can always bring through, which really does just show exactly what they're made of. But you haven't seen anything yet, I assure you that. We have the likes of Spale. Now, these guys... They can either be, you know, your top tier team. They could, ch they have challenged and beaten the best. First prime Dignitas, they, they've got brilliant results. They can show up and absolutely smash the top teams. But some days, they don't even know what's going on. They don't even know what, why they play with tier ones in games. And they ask why Artie's not played anymore. They turn into absolute noobs for no reason, but other than the fact it's Spale. So you never know what you're in for with them. It could be an absolute incredible game, or it can be Spale going, what the hell am I doing here today? But it's always interesting to find out what day they're kind of having in, in al almost essence. But they will be facing off against Alpha. Now, the thing to bear in mind, this is not just your normal mid-season game. Yeah. This means everything to these guys. 
they had a great bit of form throughout season. This is Spale, bear in mind. They had a great bit of form. They had some brilliant results. They'd be in the top. They were really up there, and then they let it slip. Towards the end of the season, they just could not get the results in at all. And it was heartbreaking to watch. Even on Twitter, they were you know, saying, we need to get this game. Yeah. This is it. And they couldn't get it. So we watched them drop down to the relegations, and now they have to fight for their place into next season. Whereas Alpha, a team you might recognize from the initial season, are challenging once again. These guys are not new to this. They're certainly a team who've been there before, and we have some great statistics coming up for you guys about these two. But guys, we'll be back in five. Hopefully you guys will be as well. So do tune in in just a moment.